Hey everyone, Ryan from E-Bike Escape. And in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Electric Expedition. Wait until you hear the price on this electric bike. All right, let's get into it. Before we get started with the review, if you are looking to purchase any model offered by Electric, we really appreciate it if you use our link down in the description. It's a free and easy way to help support the channel and makes videos like this one possible. We'll also throw links down in the description to our electric bike accessories list, top e-bike brands page, and finally our electric bike discounts code page where we track all the deals on the electric bike brands that we follow. With that, let's get into the walk around of the electric expedition cargo electric bike. So first I'll give you a walk around, talk about all the components, and then we'll get into some first person riding footage, talk about top speed, talk about the pedal assist, throttle, and then I'll get into some third person riding footage where I'll give you my concluding thoughts on this cargo electric bike. Now it is called the Expedition. I usually call cargo electric bikes minivans of electric bikes because they haul kids, but Expedition also works. And certainly this bike has a lot of cargo capability. And in fact, Electric is touting some pretty large numbers, total payload capacity of 450 pounds, max rider weight of 330 pounds, rear rack capacity of 300 pounds, which is very impressive. And then of course, if you opt for the front rack, that has a max capacity of 35 pounds. Now, one of the most impressive things about this electric bike is price. Now, it shouldn't surprise me at this point, but I continue to be impressed at what the electric team is able to do at the price. The single battery version is priced at $13.99, making it one of the most, if not the most affordable cargo electric bike on the market. Seriously impressive. And the dual battery, which we'll get into, that's this version priced at $16.99, which is still far lower than many cargo electric bikes on the market. This bike does come virtually fully assembled. You can check out the unboxing video that JT did. Of course, you still might wanna have a bike shop go through it before you start riding, but this is the easiest cargo electric bike that I've set up. And in fact, I'll touch on a few of the things as we walk around this electric bike that I was impressed with. Now to keep things simple, and I imagine this also keeps costs down, this bike is just offered in one color. Electric is calling it fog gray. It's really more of a white. Hopefully that's showing up on camera. And then there's some black electric branding around the electric bike. And of course it has the square tubing, which is very familiar from all of the electric electric bikes. And one very interesting thing is this is the first not foldable electric electric bike, even with their trike that we recently reviewed. That bike was foldable, though they couldn't go without any folding functionality. You can see the handlebars fold there just to help get it in the back of a vehicle if you needed to. All right, let's jump into the components and see what this bike has to offer. First, let's start with the brakes, 180 millimeter rotors with Zoom hydraulic disc brakes, very impressive at this price. Now these Zoom brakes are very familiar to me and in my experience, they function great. The bike has a bolt-on axle as opposed to a quick release, but one thing I do like for safety is to have these washers that act as torque arms. You can see there's a point there that actually goes into the frame and helps keep the wheel where it's supposed to be. The bike is sitting on electric branded 20 by three inch tires, slime pre-installed, certainly have some street tread. This is not an off-road electric bike, but gives you a little bit more stability given they are three inches. And if you want even more puncture protection other than the slime that they have pre-installed, let's get into today's video sponsor. This video is sponsored by Tannis. We're really excited to have Tannis as our first sponsor here at eBike Escape. Getting flats on an eBike can be especially difficult to fix, so why not help prevent them in the first place? Tannis Armor inserts are inserts that go inside your tire, providing 15 millimeters of protection at the base and two millimeters of protection on the sidewalls. Tannis makes purchasing the liners super simple. Simply go to their website, type in your tire size, it spits out the liners you need. Don't forget the tubes. Then you can either install them at home by yourself or take them to your local trusted bike shop. While we do know there are many e-bike manufacturers that offer Tannis tire liners on their website, if you go directly to Tannis' website, we have negotiated 
a discount code for eBike Escape viewers. Discount code can be found in the description below. Thanks to Tannis for sponsoring this video. Moving on to the rest of the components, rigid front fork here, a little electric branding, metal fenders, front and rear, they are paint matched. Moving on to the integrated front light. Now with most of these lights, they don't provide a lot of visibility during the daylight, but they are fairly decent at night. If you want additional visibility, I always recommend the external rechargeable lights that you can put on a blinking mode to make sure motorists see you. We have the same four bolt pattern that we see on many of the electric electric bikes. So you can put the front cargo package on here in case you need even more cargo capability. Let's talk about cable management. I think Electric did a really nice job. You can see they have wrap almost all the way on these cables and then they come into one bundle. Now they do have one cable running in the down tube here and then some other cables running externally on the frame. Folding handlebar in case you wanna cut down on the width or perhaps you're throwing it in the back of a minivan. On the Electric Expedition, we have this adjustable stem with a quick release. So you simply slide the lever up and lift up. And this gives you full adjustability up and down. And you can also twist the handlebars to your liking, which is nice as well. This might be helpful if you're sharing this cargo electric bike with someone else in the family. Maybe they're a different height or they prefer a different riding position. And there are some markings up here to make sure that you get those handlebars centered. Moving on to the cockpit, this might look a little familiar if you're familiar with other electric electric bikes because they share some of the same components. For grips, we have the same grips that we saw on the Electric XP 3.0. They are ergonomic grips, so there's a little palm rest. They are non-locking, so if you find that these are slipping around, you can always upgrade to some locking grips. And they have electric branded bar ends. Already talked about the Zoom hydraulic disc brakes. There's motor cutoffs here, so as soon as you hit the brakes, it's going to cut power to the motor. Moving on to the right, we have a twist grip throttle. That's what I prefer compared to the thumb throttles. And then we have a very basic Shimano seven speed thumb shifter. This is the SIS index, a component we see on many electric bikes. Now, while it isn't higher on the Shimano hierarchy, it does get the job done. These handlebars do have a slight lift to them, but you're not going to notice too much as far as ergonomics go. These aren't swept back handlebars. Let's jump into the controls and display. So you have your power button and then pedal assist up and down. Let's go ahead and power the bike on. Now, again, this is the display that we've seen on all of the electric bikes. And I'm a huge fan of the display, even though it is monochrome because it is so easy to see. In the top, we have energy bar. That's going to be your battery capacity. Speed front and center, nice and large. Pedal assist level, zero all the way up to five. And then we have odometer. Hitting the power button will cycle through additional information. Trip, voltage, current, and time. There are some advanced settings you can change and you can get into those settings by holding the pedal assist up and down button at the same time. Now make sure you don't change anything unless you know what you're changing. Electric has a really nice manual on their website and you can learn all about the display functionality. Let's talk a little bit more about the frame. Step through frame design, so nice and accessible. 18.75 inch standover height. You can see some reinforcements along the frame here. And I wanna show the cabling again underneath the bike. You can see the controller. This is a 24 amp controller mounted externally below the bike. And again, those cables running externally along the frame. Since we're down here, let's talk about this kickstand. Now on cargo electric bikes, I personally prefer kickstands that are way overbuilt for additional stability, especially if you're throwing cargo in the rear. So this is something that I'd like to see them improve. You can see that the feet on this are fairly narrow. And if you were on soft ground, this could dig in a little bit more. And if you've watched some of our other reviews, there's definitely some more burly kickstands that I've seen. Of course, this kickstand is going to hold up the bike just fine. You can see I have it on a paver. Just wish it was a little bit more overbuilt, especially given this is a cargo electric bike. One other thing I'll call out with the bike on its kickstand is there's no deflopulator. That is a spring that runs from the front wheel to the frame and helps keep the front wheel aligned, especially if it's on its kickstand so it doesn't just fall to the side as you can see here. For pedals, Electric did something a little bit different that I'm a huge fan of. Usually I just gloss over the pedals, but these are very unique. You can see that they're Electric branded metal pedals and they have some pegs in here for increased traction with your feet. 
But what's really cool is they are quick release. So they're actually super easy to install and remove. I personally think this is going to be really handy when we put it on our bike rack, just in case we need more clearance when we have two bikes on the rack. And you simply put the pedal in and slide that up and push the pedal in. And again, this is something that Electric has thought about because they don't really want you to have to assemble your electric bike. And so quick release makes it nice and easy. All right, the battery is one of the huge selling points of this electric bike. If you opt for the single battery version at $13.99, you get one 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery. But if you get the dual battery version, you get double the capacity, 28 amp hours of capacity, which is simply unheard of at the $16.99 price point. Now, if you do get the dual battery version, they do give you two sets of keys, of course. I wish that they were keyed the same so you don't have to worry about which keys go to which battery. So it's a little tight in here. These batteries are back to back, especially with the Thule seats, but I'll remove the seat post one here so you can see it. There's a button on the front of the battery that gives you an idea of how full it is. They have a notice on the front of the battery. Battery will go into sleep mode after 48 hours of inactivity. To wake, push the charge level indicator button on the battery, that's this one. And again, 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery. And this battery pack is compatible with the Electric X Premium. And that second battery is tucked even further back and with the orbiter installed as well as the Thule seats, just going to be a little bit more difficult to get the battery out. And of course the keyhole isn't as easily accessible. You might have noticed this seat post is telescoping to make sure it is accommodating to even taller riders. I'll talk a little bit more about the geometry in my third person riding footage, but no issue at least raising the seat into a very high position in case you're a taller rider. For the seat, they went with the same seat that we saw on the Electric XP 3.0, a little bit more of a sporty seat. Now, of course, seats are personal preference, so if you want something a little bit more comfortable, be sure to check out our electric bike accessories list. Being that this is a cargo electric bike, we wanted to show off some of the really cool accessories that Electric has created. Now, this isn't all of them, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see our full accessories video on a electric expedition. Let's talk first about the footboards that Electric is offering. They are metal and they kind of have this grippy paint to them. So this is going to be, if you have older riders, a place for them to put their feet. Continuing with the theme of this bike being easy to install, there's actually a button that you use to install these footboards and then you tighten these bolts up when they're in place. So these are pretty easy to remove, which I really like. All right, jumping to what Electric is calling the Orbiter. I think it's a very unique name. This is really a cage to kind of go around your children, gives them somewhere to put their hands on when they're riding. And you can see we have two Thule Yup Maxi child seats. So these have the windows. I'll remove the Thule seat just so you can see beneath it. And I did notice that the clearance is extremely tight, though it does work. It can be a little bit tricky to remove the seat with the orbiter installed. So there's the Thule Up Maxi window and you can see how the orbiter is designed to make that work. Again, zoom hydraulic disc brakes in the rear and nutted rear axle, no surprise there. But they also have a torque arm for increased safety. Really like to see that. With most cargo electric bikes, we see wheel guards and given they have so much tubing over here, there's not as much to worry about. So what Electric did is they put these two smaller pieces of wheel guard clear plastic to help prevent anything from getting stuck in the wheels. Moving on to the rear, we have an integrated rear light. It is not brake actuated and it's barely visible during the daylight, something that might be able to be improved over time. And again, the rear metal fender. Okay, motor power, this is a powerful motor. 750 watt nominal, 1,310 watt peak motor. And we'll talk a little bit more about the power of this motor in the upcoming first person riding footage. Electric states that this bike is a class three electric bike when you go into the advanced settings. So speeds up to 28 miles per hour. Not something you might wanna do, especially when the bike is loaded, but good to know that the bike is capable. For a derailleur underneath the footrest, Shimano Tourney. Now this is on the most entry level components that you can get 
from Shimano, but again, it functions just fine. And it is a component that we see on many of these more affordable electric bikes. For gearing in the rear, seven speeds, 11 to 28 teeth. In the front, we have a dual sided, it is plastic, 52 tooth front chain ring. And we have this chain guide as well, given this is a cargo electric bike, the chain is a bit longer. So that keeps the tension on the chain. And I also wanted to show off the bottle cage bosses. What's really nice is they have three here, so you can mount a bottle cage higher or lower, depending on your preference, or perhaps a folding lock. And they have a secondary option here on the seat tube. With that, let's get into some first person riding footage and see what the electric expedition can do. All right, first person riding footage on the electric expedition. I have the GPS speed here on my phone. This is the speedometer app by Coolnix. I get that question pretty frequently and we'll be comparing it to the electric display. Now I did go into the advanced settings and override it. Comes shipped as a class two electric bike, which means a top speed of 20 miles per hour while pedaling or using the throttle, overriding it. Of course, allows you to get up to 28 miles per hour while pedaling. Be sure to follow all your local laws and regulations. One thing I wanted to call out is electric has moved from a speed-based pedal assist to a current-based on the new Expedition. So previously, and with a lot of electric bikes, speed-based means that in pedal assist level one, you might have the motor cut off at, you know, five, six, seven miles per hour, where it's just not going to assist you any further. Now with the current-based system, it's basically a current going in at each pedal assist level. So that speed might differ a little bit. You might, you know, start in pedal assist level one, start at five miles per hour and kind of creep up a little bit, just depending. So keep that in mind as we go through the first person riding footage. Another thing that I just wanted to mention briefly briefly is that the pedal assist level does coincide with the throttle. Some people like that, some people don't. I think on a cargo electric bike like this, it actually works quite well because you might not want to go in pedal assist level five or have full access to the throttle. If you're just getting started, say you have a lot of load in the back, some precious cargo, you might want to start off in pedal assist level one and just get give you a little bit of speed to get going. All right, but with that, let's start off with throttle only and I'll put it in pedal assist level five, so we're gonna get full power from the motor, and we'll see what the bike can do. All right, three, two, one, throttle only. Six, 10, really powerful motor, 16, 18, 19, electric display is reading 20 miles per hour, and I'm assuming it's just a rounding error. error. The GPS speed is saying 19 miles per hour. So that's the bike and there's 20 miles per hour. All right, so let's go in the various pedal assist levels with throttle only just to give you an idea. So I'm in pedal assist level one and you can see that's kind of easing me along. Started at around six miles an hour, nine miles an hour. And so this is a nice gentle pace, 10 miles an hour. If I go into pedal assist level two, feel the motor a little bit there. 13 miles an hour, 15, 16, 17, and you can kind of see how it's creeping up. Pedal assist level three, getting up into that 19, 20 miles per hour. So even in pedal assist level three, throttle only, you're able to get to that 20 miles per hour. Again, that's likely the current-based system compared to the speed-based. So really, pedal assist level four and five, you're probably just going to be using if you just really want uh, all the acceleration that this bike has. Okay, let's go in the various pedal assist levels. I have it in first gear and I'll shift up through the gears. Pedal assist level one, and I do think the bike is tuned very nicely. Pedal assist level one doesn't jerk you. Nice and easy. Going about nine miles an hour. And I'd probably shift up here second gear, maybe even third gear. A little bit of a slower cadence is what I prefer. Going about 10 miles an hour now. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level two. Feel the motor there. I would shift up to fourth gear. Going about 13, 14 miles an hour. Electric display is reading a little bit higher at 15, 16 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level three. And definitely feel a lot more or more motor there. And I'm gonna have to shift up into fifth gear, sixth gear. And we're hitting 21 miles an hour, 23 miles an hour, 24 miles an hour. Again, this is pedal assist level three. And we have a stop sign here. 
All right, let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level four. And I'm gonna go ahead and go into seventh gear, 25 miles an hour according to the electric display. And I am just very leisurely pedaling this bike. So tons of power, it says 30 miles an hour on the electric display. GPS is reading 27. So electric display is reading a little bit higher. There's 28 miles an hour. Wow, super capable. And again, this is a cargo electric bike. So you're unlikely going to want to be pedaling any kind of cargo at 20 miles per hour. At least I won't be. All right, let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level five. I'm in a higher gear. Take a little bit for the pedal assist. Cadence sensor to pick that up. All right, here we go. So again, pedal assist level four was already getting me up to that 28 miles per hour. So pedal assist level five, probably again going to be reserved if you just want a ton of tough power from the get go. Definitely a powerful motor. Now, in most of our videos, this is where we jump to the hill climb test, but we'll have to save that for another day given we are in flat Florida. But let's get into some third person riding footage and I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the electric expedition. It seems like electric is tackling every category of e-bike leading with price. The XP trike and now the expedition diverge from the company's roots of two wheeled folding e-bikes. Now we have an actually affordable electric trike and now unquestionably the best affordable cargo e-bike in the expedition that starts at just $13.99. It's been a crazy start to 2023 for electric and given my bias towards cargo e-bikes, I now have a new favorite in the electric lineup. So let's start with the two main specs especially important for cargo e-bikes, motor power and battery. I'd even add a third, hydraulic disc brakes which are easier on the hands, but also help bring large loads to a stop faster compared to mechanical disc brakes. Back to the motor. It's hard to imagine a scenario where the 750 watt nominal motor that peaks at 1310 watts isn't enough power. Suffice to say, in pedal assist level 5, you better be ready for it. We'll have to take the expedition up our hill climb test back in Wisconsin to compare it to other e-bikes, but on flat ground the motor really pulls in the highest pedal assist. And battery. I imagine most people will find the 14 amp hour battery sufficient, but for those long haulers out there, the 28 amp hour capacity is an absurd amount of battery for the price at $16.99. Electric is quoting a range of up to 75 miles on the single battery and 150 miles on the dual battery version. I'd estimate that the way most people will ride these e-bikes to get around half that, which is still impressive. Worth understanding is that the batteries drain simultaneously with the bike running off the more full battery and switching between them until empty. Also impressive, the weight capacities are higher than any other affordable cargo e-bike. A total max payload of 450 pounds and a rear rack capacity of 300 pounds. Let's talk briefly about geometry. The step through frame makes it accessible for even shorter riders, down to four foot 11 according to electric. As someone who is six feet tall, the cockpit is on the shorter end, there are no issues with leg extension, but in that position, I felt like I'm towering over the handlebars, which yes, are adjustable, but in my opinion, you lose some amount of control the higher they point. So ideally, I'd have the handlebars even higher. Of course, this lower to the ground geometry starts with the 20 inch wheels, which helps keep a lower center of gravity. JT on the other hand, who is five foot eight with a 29 inch inseam, felt perfectly comfortable, and my wife, who's five five, felt like the bike fit her like a glove. If you've never been on a cargo e-bike before, it's worth just being aware that these style of e-bikes handle differently, especially loaded up. Load up the Expedition with two kids, take into account the dual batteries and the rear motor, and that's a lot of weight in the rear compared to the front of the e-bike. So start slow until you get the feel for it, or better yet, ride it around with no cargo first. Other nice additions were the quick release removable pedals, and Electric really nailed the accessories that are available, which of course are where cargo e-bikes really shine. Any complaint about the Expedition is far outweighed by the value. I would have liked to see electric spring for a beefier kickstand and a second charger when you opt for the dual battery version, 
Charging both batteries up from empty will take a whopping 14 hours with the two amp charger. Might be worth purchasing a second charger. And yes, these are entry level Shimano components, but it's kind of expected at this price point. On the plus side, Electric thought carefully about the gearing and that 52 tooth front chain ring ensures there's no ghost pedaling, even at the highest speeds. You're always able to provide power. If you've decided the Electric Expedition is your next cargo e-bike, We'd really appreciate it if you take the time and use our link down in the description below. It's a direct way to support the channel. Thanks in advance for your support. Let me know what you think of this e-bike down in the comment section below. Did Electric nail it with their first cargo e-bike? As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.